This is the Chester County Real Estate Podcast. Welcome to the Chester County Real Estate Podcast. This is a podcast that helps give you give you all the information you need to make your next move a great one. I'm your host, Sean Dominski, and I'm sitting here today with Ramsey Coulter of Coulter Credit. Uh, Ramsey, welcome to the show, man. Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me on today. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so real quick, uh, Ramsey, a little bit about yourself and your history uh, and what... Uh, and, and tell us a little bit about the history of what you've what you've done and Coulter Credit. Sure. Yeah. So uh, my name is Ramsey Corey Coulter, um, and yeah, I started a credit repair company in Chester County in two thousand and fifteen, two thousand fourteen. Um, and so we are a legally registered and bonded credit repair company. Uh, as far as I'm aware, we're the only legally registered and bonded credit repair company in Chester County and one of the very few in the entire state of Pennsylvania. Uh, well, basically, what that means is, you know, basically it means we're insured and bonded. And so that, you know, if, if anybody has any disputes uh, regarding, you know, our work and our money, they, they basically have a money back guarantee <laughs> is oh. what that means. Nice, nice. Um, Cool. Yeah. yeah. And we've talked before. We've, uh, we've, we've done shows like this before. Um, yeah. But uh, I basically, I wanted to bring you on because I wanted to talk a little bit specifically about the process of getting a mortgage, which you also have experience in too. Um, yeah. and, and the importance of credit score and how your credit score affects your, the mortgage process. So uh, the first thing is, obviously, we know, you know, if you want to get a loan, you have to have a decent credit score. But how important is credit, your credit score when it comes to getting a mortgage specifically, like for home buying? Sure. Yeah, sure. So I mean, it's, it's definitely it's super important. And, and so the way I like to explain it is, you know, credit gets your foot in the door. You know, people think that credit is the most important thing. And yes, it is a very important thing, uh, which is why you know we started a credit education and credit repair company. But um, it, it's really just gets your foot in the door for the mortgage process. And then there's other aspects that, that, that you know, of course, go into that process as well. But um, typically speaking, you know, you're going to need at least a 580 middle uh, FICO mortgage industry score. And so FICO mortgage industry score, not a FICO score, not just one of the 68 plus different FICO scores. There are three that mortgage companies, uh, which are, you know, there's TransUnion version, uh, there's Experian version two, there's uh, TransUnion version four, and there's Equifax Beacon 5.0. Those are the scores that mortgage companies use. They're not Credit Karma scores. They're not Credit Wise scores. They're not any of those free scores.com or free this or free that or free FICO or none of those scores are your mortgage scores. You have to go to FICO to get your mortgage scores or a mortgage under. Gotcha. And uh, so what are they, so what's Credit Karma and all those places to giving you if they're not giving you your mortgage scores? Sure. Yeah, sure. So um, Credit Karma and Credit Wise, which is from Capital One, um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. There's so many free scores out there typically they are a vantage 3.0 credit score and so the vantage score was created by the credit bureaus to compete with fico because the credit bureaus sell fico scores that's part of their job they have a they have a relationship with fico and they sell fico scores um so fico has it easy they don't need a sales force they have a multi-billion dollar companies sell their sell their product for them which is the credit bureaus and so the credit bureaus realized wow, they make so much money off this. Why don't we make money off of it and create our own credit scores? So about like 20 years ago, 15 years ago, they started the Vantage credit scoring competing algorithm against FICO. Um, they, there was lawsuits, but whatever, who cares? Um, and <laughs> and um, yeah, So, but as of now, no mortgage company in America uses a Vantage score. They still don't. It's on the roster to eventually be approved, um, but it hasn't been yet. So, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So your credit score is the foot in the door, and this is where you know a good amount of people kind of, if they're looking to buy a house, they have to they have to have a decent credit score. Um, 
And and then obviously, and this you know we've worked together on this bef- uh, in the past. Whereas if you don't have a decent credit score, you can't get a mortgage. Uh, does your credit r- score affect the rate that you get for the mortgage, like it does with other kinds of loans? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yep. So yeah, your interest rate. Of course, there are other factors, but your credit score is a super important factor in your interest rate. Um, you know, your debt to income is also a factor. How much money you're putting down on the house is another very important factor. But yes, your credit score is super important when it comes to the mortgage interest rate. And so typically every 20 points is it gets you to the next tier or the next level. Not always, but, and usually that's starting, you know, at, at, you know, 600 and above. So, uh, you know, like I said, typically you're going to need a 580 or higher. Yes. If you Google FHA, uh, credit score requirements, technically they go down to 500. <laughs> um, they're not fun. You have, you have to put a lot more money down. It's not, you know, three and a half percent and uh, there's hoops and you, you have, you better have a lot of money for having such a, a low credit score because otherwise it's not going to happen. Um, but 580 is usually the, the minimum benchmark. And then really most lenders will tell you they want you to have a 620 or higher. So at 620, you know, at least then you could start to get decent rates, especially with FHA. Conventional is a different story. Conventional, you really want um, like a 700 plus. I mean, you could get away with a 680 or a 660, but you better be putting 20% down if you're going conventional, uh, anything below 700 it could be pretty tough on the mortgage insurance and the interest rate they're going to get you pretty good so um yeah so so it goes up in tiers what's the what's like the break-even point that you usually recommend before someone applies for a mortgage um because you see them both ways you see people who can't get you know low credit score and you send them to counseling um or they you know the score is good like what, what would be good enough well, so it depends on, so FHA, I mean, good enough is a 600 and above. FHA yeah. is good enough. Um, but conventional, which if you talk to realtors nowadays in this market, it's super competitive. It's, it's really tough to get an FHA offer accepted. It happens. It's, I've seen it happen very recently. I have clients who've got their offers accepted. It's in certain markets in certain areas with houses that have been listed longer. <laughs> um, but it is tough. It's, t- it's really tough. And so you want to have a 700 or higher in this market, even with conventional, even at a 701, I mean, it's, it's, you're going to, you're going to be close to 6% interest nowadays, you know, with going yeah. conventional at, with below a 740. So. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for every agent, but I mean, personally, I haven't seen an FHA mortgage in a couple of years. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just it's they just still exist. I... One more thing. I mean, yeah, it definitely exists, and <laughs> and it's definitely an option. But with really competitive properties, that yeah. it's it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. Let's put it that way. Uh, your, your offer it's would tough. have to be exceptional for the seller to to turn to take it. Um, because right, like nowadays, the uh, the sellers is just they had they have when you have so many offers on the table, then everything becomes a big deal. So you know you can't. Yeah. It's really hard to wa- to talk yourself into a home sale contingency or FHA or, or anything that makes the deal a little bit weak. It's just giving the sellers a reason just to kind of move on to the next offer. Um, now maybe you can compensate in price, but when the price is getting escalated so high. Uh, you know, that's not always, that's not always possible. Um, but you know, things, you never, you never know, uh, you know, things could change, uh, this time next year before then or so. And just try, you know, try to try to, I, my goal is to get people informed so they can be prepared for any kind of market, you know? So. Yep. yep. Um, exactly. So, I mean, in, in any type of market, you want to have a 700 plus credit score. I mean, regardless, you want to be shooting for the 700 plus. Once you get to a 740 or higher, it's practically all the same. It's really just bragging rights um, as far as interest rates are concerned and everything. So, you know, when people are at like the 740 and they're like, well, I really want to be at 800. Eh, eh, okay. Who cares? It's not that big of a deal. I know it's, it's just, it's literally just an ego thing, which I, I get it. But, uh, but yeah, 740 is is where like the most you would want to shoot for. For practical purposes. Unless it's about the bragging rights, which I completely <laughs> understand. Because every now and then I'll be like, oh, what can I do to improve my credit score? Because it's I, I it's it's fairly decent, I think. But uh yeah, it's fun. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, absolutely. 
So, so what are some of the things that, so, okay. So someone's in that seven to seven forty range. What are some of the things that they should be doing and steps they should be taking um, if they're looking to buy a house in, in the near future? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, for, for anybody looking to buy a house in the near future, um, these are the steps that you'd want to do. Same with if you're in the 700 to 740 is one, don't apply for any other credit. Okay. So anytime you apply for credit or open new credit, it's going to hurt your credit because now you have a new credit inquiry, which isn't that big of a deal typically. Um, but then you're going to have a new account and the new account is what's going to hurt more ha because now it that brand new account decreases your average age of credit history because it's a one month old account mm. so it's brand new and so that brings down your average age of credit which is more important than the inquiry but but when you have two things that could be bringing your score down now that that hurts too so um on that but, note, yeah, if it. someone did open something recently, would they would it help them to, to close that one first? Like you want to keep the longest no. accounts? So it's average age. It's just the average mm -hmm. age of all of your accounts that have been opened. So um, yeah, closing an account also will hurt your credit. So you don't want to close an account either um, uh -huh. because now that account's closed, it, it's, it's no longer reporting you know on-time payment history and the average age stops on that account. The eight, that account doesn't get any older because it's now closed. And so gotcha. opening or closing accounts or using credit cards are all things you do not want to do when you're trying to get a home, regardless of your credit score. Now, if the question was, if you're in the 700 to 740 range and you want to get there, what should that person do? One is the same thing. Don't open or close any new credit cards or any accounts. Mm -hmm. um, don't apply for new credit and uh, try your best to pay off or pay down all of your credit cards to a, as low as possible. You do want to keep a very small balance on one of your credit cards. So believe it or not, you actually, um, you lose points. If all of your credit cards are zero balance, you actually get penalized because you have no credit card utilization. And so ideally, you want to shoot for uh, anywhere from one to 10%. One to 8% is where the 800 club people generally have their credit card usage is in the one to 8% range. So 10% is easier math. So if you have a $5,000 limit credit card, where if all your credit card limits combined are five thousand dollars, you want to have balances below five hundred dollars uh, total. Gotcha. So. Uh, on that on that topic with the uh, w with opening up new accounts, um, so when someone and and this might be a little bit step more into the mortgage side as well. Uh, what is the difference between getting pre approved for a mortgage? Because don't uh, th doesn't a mortgage lender pull your credit when you get pre approved? and actually applying for a loan, basically would getting pre-approved for a mortgage hurt your credit score? Right, yeah. So so when the lender pulls it, 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 you don't instantly lose points. They see your credit prior to that inquiry hitting your credit. And so it's not like that damages your score. And technically you have 14, 14 days where you can shop around for mortgages with different lenders and it does not impact your credit uh, anymore. After those 14 days, then if you have a new lender pull it, it does negatively impact your credit, but it's it's shopping around. It's called deduping uh, mm -hmm. from FICO. They call it deduping. They realize you're not buying five houses just because you shopped around with five different lenders. Um, they know you're going to go with one and typically buy one house. <laughs> typically. <laughs> right. So is that like a, so they say soft inquiry versus hard inquiry? So no, they're, they're, those are all hard inquiries. Each lender will be a hard pull, but FICO doesn't penalize you like you just applied. So when you apply for a credit card, it always penalizes you because- uh -huh you either get that credit card or you don't. And you go to the next one, you're applying for a brand new, different type of line of credit, a credit card. And this is not the case when you're shopping around for a car or for a mortgage. Mortgages, you have 14 days to shop. Cars, you have 30 days or 45 days, depending on the FICO score that they use. So, uh, And how often, all right, so I'm, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to give a personal, uh, 
situation here that I'm kind of curious about. Um, so I had a credit card with a company um, and we, we paid it off. <clears throat> we then applied for an auto loan through that, through that company, through that bank, um, and decided not to go with it. So about a couple weeks later, we went to another bank and tried to get a personal loan from that other bank. They pulled my credit and they saw that we had a huge balance on a credit card. Now, we just paid that off. I don't know the timing, but within the last week or two or so. Um, and they said we had a hard inquiry on our credit, uh, which would have been the auto loan. So for those reasons, we couldn't get the personal loan from the second bank. That makes mm -hmm. sense, right? Like okay. that, yeah. that um, so then I was like, well, the bank that we originally had the credit card with and had that first loan, they know that, you know, they, you know, they know that that hard inquiry wasn't a, uh, wasn't another loan and they know that we don't have a bounce on the card. So we went back to them for the personal loan and we were able to get it. Does it take a while when you pay down a balance or whatever to, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to update Report. on the FICO credit score. Uh, is yep. that just kind of like a delay in reporting that we experienced mm -hmm. there? Yeah. Yeah. So anything credit related, it's safe to say it needs 30 days, 30 okay. days to update. We live in an instant gratification world where, you know, and we live in an electronic world where you make your payments online. And why is it not just simply tr that data is not just simply transferred over to the credit bureaus and they instantly update it. It doesn't work like that. Um, it, it, it can take, so credit card companies only, they have to pay to report to each credit bureau. So it costs them money. So they only pay one time a month to report Sean's credit card. They're not going to pay to report it every day. That would be too expensive. Your interest rate would be even higher. Um, right. And so that is what it is. It, it Anything, if you pay off an account, if you open an account, it could take 30 days to update. If you pay it off, it could take 30 days. If there's a collection that you pay, it could take 30 days to update. Anything credit related, it's safe to just say, give it 30 days. Right. Okay. So if you are looking to get a mortgage or get a loan and you are taking those steps to improve your credit, it's going to take a little bit of time for everything to go through. So it's yeah. not something yeah. that's going to yeah. Yeah, exactly. So back to that scenario where you were saying, you know, someone's in the 700, you know, range with 740, what should they be doing? They should not be applying for credit. They should not be opening new credit. They should not be closing any credit. They should not be using their credit cards. That's mm -hmm. a hard one for a lot of people. Stop using your credit cards. If you want to buy a house, I don't care. Yes. Yes. You have to use cash, um, or debit card. Um, really? <laughs> well, I mean, that's and, assuming that you have the cash on hand for the down okay, payment well, and everything. Right. Well, I mean, if you're buying a house, I imagine you you definitely have some cash because there's no such thing as buying a house for zero dollars. So not, it's called not anymore. It's there a was gift. a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, and, and yeah, that basically they should be paying down their credit cards and yes, giving it time for that everything to update because it can and will take up to 30 days to report to the credit bureaus. So you want to pay off your credit cards, stop using them, or just use one credit card while you're in the mortgage process and give it time and, and, then, and then apply for the mortgage once your credit cards have updated. Now, the only time I actually like or recommend Credit Karma is for that purposes. It is for checking the data. Is It's for checking, my did my credit card update its balance yet? Um, mm. the, the way to know it, other than credit karma, which only shows you two out of three, but the way to know is it's the statement date. So it's not on, on a credit card. It's not the due date on, on there. It's the statement date. It's the date. That's the date that they report to the credit bureaus. The statement date is usually within a week after you make your payment. So you make your payment or you're supposed to, and then they report to the credit bureaus to update it after you've made a payment. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, so th I guess basically the next, the, the next question I have is, you know, I'm not thinking of anyone specifically, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who are thinking they would like to buy a house. They'd like to get a mortgage, but they need to work on their credit first. Uh, generally, mm -hmm. what do you tell those people? Yeah, uh, give it time. <laughs> yeah. So uh, on average, 
on average credit repair, whether you're working on, on it yourself or with a credit repair company, it, it's going to take four to six months on average. That's the average. Yeah. People are like, well, why does it take so long? Well, let me ask you a question. How long did it take of you not paying your credit card bill until it charged off and went to collections? The answer is six months. It took six months of you not paying that bill for it to finally be charged off and sent to a collection agency, typically for credit cards, that that is the, that's how it works. Some other like utility bills that might be quicker, <laughs> less than six months. Um, medical bills they now have to wait six months, and this is about to be a year. Next year it will be a year that they have to wait until they can report it on your credit uh, in collections. But um, but yeah, it it took a while for for your credit to get into the three hundreds, the four hundreds, the five hundreds, um, even even into the low six hundreds. You know, it took damage. There's damage that happened, and so you have to give your credit time. Mm -hmm. You have to first of all, you have to have positive payment here history now. So the worst thing that people can do and do i see it every day is they will mess up with credit cards and they'll say oh i was young i was dumb i was in college i was in high school whatever you know i just didn't know what i was doing and then they don't open any new credit because they're scared of messing up again and then therefore their credit's just stale it just it just it's not getting better if it is it's getting a little bit better but they're not showing that they are now responsible they're not showing that on-time payment history to the credit bureaus and that's the number one most important thing um when you have missed payments you right you know i i i, I um relate it to, to basketball right so if you're at the free throw line and you're shooting free throws right and and you're looking like shaquille o'neal out there and you're missing every other payment it's not good right but how do you how did Shaq get his his shooting field goal percentage better by making more baskets. You need to make more on-time payments in order to get your on-time payment history to increase. So you need to open a secured credit card and start building that payment history. Gotcha. So first step, if someone knows their credit's not great, but they're going to want to buy a house eventually, uh, should they talk to a credit repair counselor, mortgage person, someone who's both... <laughs> Like, what do you need to do? <laughs> sure, sure. Well, yeah, obviously, there's not too many who are both, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously, so I mean, at Culture Credit Repair, we always offer free consultation. So, you know, you literally, it's free. We give you free advice. We're going to take a look at your credit report. You do have to pay $1. The dollar does not go to my company. It goes to a credit monitoring company. It is a soft inquiry. It does not damage your credit. It is you looking at your own credit. And, and they're not FICO mortgage scores, but that's okay. We care about the data. We care about what is the negative information that is bringing uh, your credit score down. Because if your credit score is low, it's going to be low across the board. It's not like a Vantage score is going to be a 500 and a FICO score is going to be a 700, okay? <laughs> um, so that's what we care about, and it's a free consultation. So you pay a dollar. We'll tell you if we can help you, how we can help you. We'll tell you what you can do to build your credit and improve it on your own. If there's any like collections that you can pay that we'll delete, we'll tell you all that. With, for free. It's a free consultation. And then if you want to sign up and if you need our help, well then, you know, then we go from there. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so where's the best place for the, for people to reach you for that? Yeah, sure. So yeah, uh, you can reach culture credit repair at 610-350-4683 or culturecredit.com or on Facebook, uh, culture credit LLC, uh, Instagram. I don't know. I think it's culture underscore credit underscore LLC. I don't know. Just, just type in culture credit and it'll pop up. <laughs> There's that not too many. Right. I, I think that's, I think I follow you. So yeah, I think, that sounds about right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but <laughs> or just go to culturecredit.com and yeah. it's going to be on there somewhere. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll find us. All right, man. Well, hey, thanks a lot. Uh, I hope someone gets something out of that. Um, I I always find it helpful whenever we talk. So uh, so yeah, I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. This has been the Chester County Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by Remax Ace Realty, serving buyers and sellers in the Chester County area. Subscribe for new episodes at acerealtypa.com slash podcast. And you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever podcasts are found. <laughs>